Hey, YouTubers, as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. But you know what? More importantly, we want to hear from you. We want to know. I, I want to know more about these pigs, man. Well, yeah, we've got a great hog hunt coming up with Tyler Barron down in Texas. So if you guys have hogs where you live, uh, we want to hear about it. Tell Definitely. us where you're from. Show us pictures of any hogs that you've shot. And let us know how you hunt them. Todd and I aren't pig hunters, so uh, fill us in and let us know the details. Thanks, guys. guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of Bowhunter Digest. And I'm not sure this is the excitement level of what we're coming off of with the turkey hunts that we've had. Way to set the stage for the episode. <laughs> Everyone keep watching, it's going to be really boring. Well, it's just we're coming off of what we always want to see, right? We're in the stands, we're in the blinds, we're sure. you know letting those arrows fly. Now we're kind of transitioning into the, 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 the difference between the diehards and the guys who just go out once or twice a year. I mean, sure. this is the time right now... When the people who want to shoot the big bucks are, are ultimately putting in the time. So That's you're telling me that if I want to shoot a big buck, I better get out and do some more work. Yes, absolutely. Apparently. Well, before we get into uh, the big buck preparation, we do have Tyler Barron, who is our Texas bow hunter die team member. Uh, he's going out and actually doing some hog hunting. Now, I don't wish that we had hogs here because they're horrible, invasive True. animals, but I do kind of envy Tyler for being able to go out and still hunt something when we're all sitting around, you know, show, doing it's whatever. Good. So, uh, hey, let's join Tyler in a tree now. Hey guys. Tyler Barron, back here in Texas, and I uh, wanted to invite you guys into my kitchen. Uh, I'm in here for the 2017 off season, uh, normally doing these type of interviews from the stand, uh, but right now I'm doing a little bit of work trying to get some arrows fletched up and uh, uh, ready to go for the upcoming season. Uh, this year, I'm gonna be shooting the Black Eagle Rampage arrows, and uh, I, right now I'm just putting on some fletchings here, so I've got the NAP Quick Fletch, uh, using the USA Pride Edition um, NAP Quick Fletches, which I think look pretty awesome, and who doesn't love America? So, um, setting those up right now. And uh, I wanted to show you guys really quick just how easy and, and pain free it is to actually set these arrows up. So, right behind me, I got some boiling water, and uh, I'm actually going to fletch this arrow here right in front of you guys and uh, just show you how quick it actually is. So, stay tuned. And I'm done. So, just gotta wait for this thing to dry now at this point, but uh, that arrow is perfectly fletched and uh, took about 10 seconds in the boiling water and uh, just about as easy of a setup as you can possibly get. So, looks good to me. I hope it looks good when it's flying through the air. Well, good morning. It's Tyler Barron here in Central Texas and uh, in the stand again for a morning hog hunt. I'm filming my interview like a ghost story because uh, past couple of times I've sat out here, I've had uh, hogs on me as soon as it started to get daylight, so I'm um, not really going to have a better chance to do a quick uh, intro here, but uh, the conditions are pretty good. We've had uh, some on and off rain over the last couple of days, and uh, this morning it's about 70 degrees, nice and breezy. Um, it's a perfect wind for this stand. The wind kind of works right across my face and comes out back behind me. Um, and uh, we're going to see what happens. Um, today I'm, I'm hoping that the hogs come in and uh, get after some of the, uh, the heartland attractant that I'm using. So I'm using the, the end of the trail attractant in front of me. Uh, scattered a little bit out on the ground and I've got a little bit mixed in with some corn in my feeders. So uh, it's got a nice sweet smell and hopefully that brings them in. Uh, they didn't like that kind of stuff, so um, I'm gonna settle in and uh, wait for the sunrise and uh, 
hopefully as soon as it comes up I'll have some pigs and, and you guys can watch me take one down so stay tuned Guys, I cannot believe that that just happened the way it did. Um, I've been chasing after these pigs for a little while now and, and haven't really been able to get them just perfectly where I needed them. And uh, today, literally two of them came in, just back to back, was able to just kind of film them as they were eating on that uh, Heartland Wildlife uh, attractant, the uh, end of the line attractant. And uh, literally they came in perfectly they were just super calm. Uh, I was able to shoot one, and seriously, within two minutes, the second one was already back in. I was able to reach down, grab another arrow, knock it, and uh, and shoot that second pig as well. So, two hogs, about two minutes, uh, and I'm a happy camper. So, um, I think they're they're both ahead of me out here. I heard one of them out there just just wheezing and taking his last breaths. Um, the other one I'm not so sure about. One was a little bit bigger than the other one. So uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of time. Text my dad. Actually, just uh, texted him. And um, i got to see if he can come over here and maybe help me uh, track these things down. See if we can get them out and uh, uh, take some pictures and uh, start cutting them up. So, guys, that was awesome. Bow hunter die. Guys, uh, here right behind my, uh, my stand where I shot those two pigs. I'm about 10 yards behind it. Um, this is actually an area that is completely destroyed back behind me by some of these pigs. So um, if you ever hear, for those of you who are, are in areas that uh, feral hogs aren't very prevalent, if you ever hear about them destroying the land, this is a good example of kind of what that looks like. It, it seriously looks like a bomb went off behind me. Um, and if you can imagine being a rancher or somebody uh, who uh, works off the land, obviously that's, that's uh, not a good thing to have. And that's why we take out these pigs every chance we get. So. Um, just wanted to show you that as well. Uh, we're not out here doing this just for fun, although it is a heck of a lot of fun. Bow hunter die. All right, guys. Well, here is the pig that I got. Uh, this is actually the second pig that I shot um, that, that came right back out after I hit that first one. And I'm probably maybe 50, 60 yards away from where I actually shot the pig and uh, I just had great blood trail all the way in and, and was really easy to find, uh, even though we were going through some pretty thick stuff. Uh, this, the first pig that I shot, we actually trailed him for a while, found really good blood, uh, found, found the arrow and had at least a good 8-10 inches of uh, penetration on him, so feel really good about that. Um, we watched the footage and it looks like a, a lethal shot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and abandon the search on him though after uh, trailing him for a while. It's getting ready to start raining and honestly he, he was uh, the bigger of the two and, and uh, probably not a very good pig for eating, so we're gonna let him feed the coyotes and uh, hopefully that'll keep them busy and keep them from eating uh, any of our whitetail fawns. So 
Uh, thanks for watching today. Um, hoping to have some more stuff for you here shortly as doing some more pig hunting and uh, some preparation for the fall. Uh, but stick with me guys, bow hunter down. Well, Todd, uh, cool hunt from Tyler down there in Texas. Like I said, it's off season for us. He's in a tree stand flinging some arrows. You know, unfortunately, he wasn't able to recover the bigger of the two pigs. Uh, but like Tyler said, the, the bigger they are, the, they aren't very good eating. So fortunately for him, he got the one that's going to taste a little bit better. And hopefully he uh, brings a little bit of that meat up here next year at the, for our, our staff meeting. Well, it sounds good to me, Justin. I mean, I definitely would eat some. But, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, when, you're, when, I'm feeling, when I'm doing my deer you know you get your deer surveys or whatever when you're tagging sure. your deer and stuff and they're asking you how many pigs you've seen i mean these pigs are a legitimate problem the further south that you go and i mean they oh, yeah. literally just ruin the land ruin you know farm fields i mean they're they're an invasive yeah, they're, species well, they're horrible for deer habitat everything. Um, and everything so yeah down in texas it's a different world than, than we live in here in illinois you've i don't want them in illinois to be no de it. well yeah. they've got some in illinois but they don't quite look like that they look no. more like farm pigs that have escaped but i mean fulton county's got them i mean i've seen them down there by by tyler and uh Clinton and Frank's play. So they definitely have them here in Illinois, just not in the same quantity. But uh, guys, next up, we are going to, uh, I guess, get some off-season updates from three other team members. Uh, we've got- well, Hang on now, before we dive oh, into that, Justin, right. we do have right. the big, huge extravaganza that Lancaster is putting out there. And that's in August. That's on the 18th and 19th. So um, let's August, get a, right? yeah, of August. So let's get a quick little update here of PJ. Uh, PJ Riley from Lancaster was here in the office. So let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about this because we're sweetening the pot. So take a look at this. Well, how fun is this? We got, we got a legend in here. We got PJ <laughs> Riley. I mean, PJ, we've been working together for years. Yes. I mean, PJ's with Lancaster Archery. Uh, what? Lancaster. Todd. Oh, how man. many times do we have to talk about Are we going to have to do another take on this? We're not from calendar. Lancaster. That's Lanca how you pronounce it. Lancaster. Say it. Lancaster. Lancaster. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was never very good. And if Justin was in here, you'd be really giving me a hard time. I'm just never going to use this word again. But you've got a big event coming up that we want to tell we guys do. about. So this is yes. the extravaganza. This is in August 18th and 19th. 18th and 19th. Yes, it's our bow hunters extravaganza every year. Something we do just for the bow hunting community you know we do a lot of stuff with target but this is strictly bow hunters big event two days lots of sales lots of right, food, that's what i want to hear lots I mean, of fun food sales food fun uh, you know we may have some celebrities there okay um, it's just a good time two days uh if you're a bow hunter it's just a great experience it's right. something to do well there you go guys i mean if you want, I mean, if you're, listen guys, everyone watching our show is a bow hunter. We expect you to go there. I, I want to make this kind of cool. So I, I'll tell you what we're going to do here. I'm going to have some sort of bow hunter die hat. It's going to be a cool one. I'm going nice. to put up, I'm going to put up 40 bow hunter die hats for the first bow hunter die, 40 bow hunter die fans to get into your store. Look for a Great. staff member. Yep. They'll be around. Mention bow hunter die is going to get a free hat from us. Awesome. That'd be cool. We appreciate that. Yeah, that'll be great. Well, there you go, guys. If you want to get good deals on bow hunting gear, August 18th and 19th at their your main facility. Yep, right outside Lancaster. Lancaster. Man, I know. I, I'm like, I'm afraid to use the word now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look us up. You can find our address. Uh, it's real easy to find. Great shop, and uh, we'll have a lot of people there. It'll be. It's always a good time. A lot of fun. Well, there you go, guys. Hopefully, we will see you there again. That's August 18th and 19th. First 40 bow hunter die fans is going to receive a free hat. So make sure you get in the door. Well, guys, there you have it. You saw Todd right here tell you that if you show up at the Lancaster Extravaganza August 18th and 19th and mention bow hunter die, you're going to get a free hat. At least the first 40 people first are going to get a right. free hat. So we have to remember to ship those hats out to PJ and his team. But guys, make sure you stop in and check it out if you're in the area. Uh, Todd, next up, we're going to jump into three kind of off-season segments. We've got Dan Richardson uh, doing some bow fishing, as we all know he loves to do. Uh, and then we're going to check in with John Herman and Neil uh, with an update on their whitetail season. So let's go. Hey, good morning everybody. Me and my youngest son Tanner are getting ready to head to some floodwaters for some bow fishing. Uh, we got a spot where uh, there's a lot of water that came out of the Patoka River 
into the fields and there's a culvert and a ditch all that water is finally coming down and it's trying to rush through that culvert through the ditch back into the river so i was there earlier shot five fish uh, didn't know what to expect didn't know it was going to be that good but there was quite a few fish that are coming in that little uh, current out of that culvert so i came back got the camera I'm gonna grab tanner and go we'll kill some fish here we are um what we've got I'm going to show you here in a minute. All this is flooded out here. These are flooded fields. And it goes into like a ditch. There's a culvert right here. The water is rushing in really hard. And then over this way is the Potoka River. All this flood water is trying to come back through this culvert and get back to the river. We've got a lot of fish kind of combing the bank here every now and then. There's a lot of bowfin. Uh, also, we call them pond grinnel, And there's going to be some gar. And who knows what else. Me and Tanner are popping these grinnel left and right. Wow, we are having some fun now. Man, I'll tell you what, that was a blast right there. Uh, my son's being a little shy right now, so he's running the camera. I can't get him in here with me, but uh, I think he killed more than I did. He definitely got the biggest fish. We had a good time down here. We killed, I think, all grinnel or bowfin. Some people call them pond grinnel. And there's one gar in here. Uh, we had a couple that got off. Seen a real big fish in here. I don't know what it was. It just kept rolling, but every time it would come up, it would be gone just as soon as we'd see it. But man, you talk about a good time. It was uh, fun getting out here with my son. We love doing this kind of thing, and we hope you enjoy it. Bow hunter die. To be proven is a blessing. It takes faith. It takes devotion. It's never taking a single moment for granted. It takes heart. It takes passion. It's understanding that the hunt is bigger than us. We are proven. We are deadly. We are Senlock. Hey everybody, Johnny Herman here. Uh, June 1st, I'm up in northern Wisconsin doing my hit list from a boat again. I figured uh, June 1st, we got bluegills on beds up here in northern Wisconsin. Thought I'd bring, up, bring out the fly rod and uh, do a little fly fishing for big bluegills and talk about uh, shooting big bucks come this fall. So um, I got, I'm going to do the same hit list I did last year, which means I didn't kill either one of those bucks. Um, I'm going to talk about two bucks. Uh, one of them's uh, up in northern Wisconsin. It's a big old seven-year-old buck named Lucifer. Uh, I've been chasing him for three years. I actually missed him in 2015, right at the end of our late season in December, coming into a bean field right at dark. And that's the only time that anybody's laid eyes on him uh, since he's been mature. So, um, Man, oh man, I, I found his, his core area last year. I was I hunted in there almost exclusively, uh, way back off the fields. He was getting in there to bed sometimes at two, three in the morning. Um, I did hear him, I think, uh, the first time I sat back there, but never got to see him and uh, never saw him all season. So I'm hoping that he made it through. 
I do not have any pictures of them after our gun season, but I do have pictures of a big mature buck that had dropped already in mid-January, so I'm hoping that that was him. Um, I've got cameras out back there um, as we speak, so to speak, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, our next pull I'm going to be able to see if he's back there because uh, we named him Lucifer because he's got these uh, brow tines that kind of look like uh, little uh, devil horns. So anyways, he'd be a great buck to take for sure. Um, I'd really like to have somebody from our group get him this year because he's not going to live too much longer with the wolf situation we got up there in northern Wisconsin. So, um, so Lucifer is definitely number one on the hit list up in northern Wisconsin. Um, moving down to Illinois, I got a couple of beautiful properties to hunt down there. Um, one of them's up in uh, northern uh, or southern Knox County, and one of them's down in Fulton County, down toward uh, Clinton and Frankie and Tyler and those guys. Um, but uh, the buck that I'm going to talk about is a buck that I called Apollo. Um, actually, my buddy named him. We were trying to think of a name for him. He's got a little short Roman nose, and so my buddy says, "Hey, let's name him uh, Apollo. That's a, a Greek god name, um, and it's uh, the god of archery." So we named him Apollo, I believe, three years ago, and I've been chasing him around ever since. I saw him twice back in 2015 and never saw him last year, although I got daytime pictures of him last year. I just never got in front of him. Um, so anyways, those are the two bucks that, uh, that I'm really going to be, you know, hunting this year. I, I haven't shot anything for a couple of years, so I don't know where that puts me for this se season. If I'm going to, if I'm going to end up uh, kind of settling for something smaller, uh, just just to kind of get my uh, my 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 kill um, satisfied, or if I'm just going to hold out like I did last year. Last year I passed up a beautiful three-year-old buck down in Illinois that 90% uh, of you guys watching it would have loved to have shot, and I would have loved to have shot him too. I just it just was early in the season and I was hoping for one of these big bucks and I just let him walk so hopefully he's going to be around ne next year or this coming fall um, and, and he's going to be bigger for it. So hopefully you guys can have a great summer. Uh, I'm going to run my stealth cams, try to get pictures of these bucks, uh, get my stand work all done and uh, I'll be ready to go come September. I hope you will too so stay safe out there. We'll see you from a tree stand this fall. All right, good morning. Today is June 8th. It's a beautiful morning. I'm in my Houston County um, farm and here in southeast Minnesota. I have not been back on the property since I found that shed. Uh, when was that? That was back in April or late March. And so actually today I'm on uh, really doing two things. One, I, I know I want to kill, uh, kill off some of my food plot uh, and get it ready for fall planting. But uh, two, also, I want to move a, move a deer stand and uh, hopefully get, uh, get a little bit of scouting in. I have not been uh, able to get a hold of uh, the farmer who actually leases the, the main egg land, so I don't know what he's planted. Um, I know it could be any combination of beans and corn, so it's a little bit like Christmas morning for me. I can't wait to get out there and, uh, and see what it's going to look like. So, go hunt or die. Well, here I am in the, uh, the scene of the crime where I uh, passed the little surprise last year. <clears throat> I am actually going to move this stand, believe it or not. There has been some good development or good news. It looks like behind me, you can see right behind over my shoulder and all the way down this line, uh, it's beans this year. And um, given that's the case, I can always pop the stand back up. but. Um, I need to get up in this corner where the deer are coming out for the beans. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this stand down quickly, get in in the in the uh, ranger, and drive it up to the corner, and uh, pick a spot to pop it back up here before I spray my fields. This is this is the best news ever. I've never had beans up against this this field edge here, and there's oaks and huge thickets. So this is going to be uh, 
this should be pretty good but i gotta i gotta make make some moves here and get my stand down over the other side so get to work bow hunter die All right, well, that is it for me for an update. Uh, it's been a really productive June. I've moved now two stands and got those stands set up. I've set up two food plots uh, and prepped them, sprayed them. I got uh, them set up for pretty much every wind that uh, Mother Nature can throw at me. And I got my stealth cams out on uh, a bunch of different spots throughout the farm. So I'm looking good. I'm really excited. It's going to be a uh, absolutely fantastic fall and it will be here before I know it so um, I'm gonna get out of here for now let the area rest and should be back here in about a month to get some seed in the ground bow hunt or die you know Justin I love these segments I mean these are the segments that really show me who's putting the time in I mean yeah. Dan Richardson is out fishing and having a good time but now excluding well, so is Herman Herman's not actually doing anything no, he's sitting on a boat he's not but his thinking brain. about deer see what I like about Johnny Herman is he's thinking he's thinking the whole time he's out there bluegill fishing he's thinking about where he's going to shoot that big buck I like that that's so, how I work. sometimes I feel like we think about it too, too much nah. <laughs> but yeah. uh no great segment from those guys really looking forward to seeing what you know, Johnny and Neil have, you know, upcoming the season. They both have some really great bucks to okay. chase. So it'll be exciting to see kind of how their seasons pan out. Uh, guys, next up, we wanted to uh, take a couple seconds just to thank the people who sent in their trophy photos for this week's episode. CJ Brabant. John Legansky. Sean Connolly. John Cogdill. Patrick Connolly. Hey guys, those are some great trophies. Remember, they start stacking up fast here. So if you want to see yourself right here on an exciting episode of Bowhunter Die, make sure you get your photos in early. Justin? Yes, sir. I know you've been doing some work. Come on, let's get a little secret update. Well, we're going to have a, the full update, I think, in the next episode. But uh, Tommy and I have got three food plots sprayed, mowed, rototilled, planted, ready to go. It has been raining, so we're hoping that everything's going to germinate. So we're hoping for our next update to kind of have the full segment on right. food plots because we didn't want to just show you like, hey, we turned over the ground, we threw some seed on it. We want it actually growing and hopefully get some trail camera pictures of some of the bucks we're after. So now, we have been doing some work. I got all my trail cameras deployed. Now, not all of them, but most of them deployed. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we got some bucks showing up here pretty soon. Well, hopefully this forage is a rain that we got. The Heartland Sea oh isn't gosh. floating its way down to the Mississippi. Matt right Miller now. texted this morning, his food plot looks like a pond right now. Yeah, <laughs> so that bad. is not good. We may end up having to replant a little bit. But it's weird because Clinton and down by those guys, they're like, they're getting no rain. It's bone dry. They're <sighs> freaking out. Food plots aren't really growing. But up here, you know, a couple hours north of them, we've just been getting absolutely hammered. Another four inches of rain last night. Todd's basement was flooding it two in the morning. So Not yeah, it should bad, be interesting. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But yeah, that's my update. How about you? I, I'm leaving right now. I'm out the door. Leave. I'm going to, I'm going to go right now and put some, I got to get my trail cameras. I'm a little behind. So I am feeling a little behind the eight ball right now, but it's okay. I'm ready to go. The truck is loaded. We're going to go and get some cameras out right now. Awesome. Well, guys, the next time you see us will be in two weeks. Hopefully, Todd and I have some uh, trail camera updates. updates and food plot updates for you. So uh, we'll see you then. Bow hunter die. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bow hunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. Beautiful day. I'm here in, um, <clears throat> try that for a third time. All right. I'm just going to do this after. Aye! That's not what you want to do, right? Well, um, how not to hold a bluegill when he's ready to flop?
by John Herman. <laughs>